Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia will soon be the first in the Eastern Caribbean region with an electronic public procurement application. The Youth Empowerment Project, YEP, is lending its support in strengthening the community after school program. And countries across the globe celebrate World Hepatitis Day. St. Lucia will soon lead the Eastern Caribbean region with the modernization of government's electronic public procurement application, EGP. The procurement software will make public procurement procedures faster and transparent while improving the competitiveness of public procurement by private sector companies. More in this report from Glenn Simon. Acting Permanent Secretary and Director of Finance Esther Rigobert signed a five-year contract with British firm Intend Limited for the provision of an electronic government procurement application for the government of St. Lucia. The award of this contract marks the culmination of a sustained program of cooperation in the area of public procurement reform between the Government of St. Lucia, the World Bank, and the Department of International Development, DFID, of the United Kingdom. But what exactly is public procurement? Anthony Jean, Assistant Director of Public Procurement, explains. Um, procurement involves a more strategic aspect of looking at the entire cycle of an acquisition of a good, its, its usage, and replacement if needs be in defining the use of that product, of that product good, service, um, is developing the right specifications to meet your desired um, outcome. With more than 500 institutions in over 100 countries around the world, Intend Limited is one of the world's leading providers of software as a solution, electronic government procurement application service providers. The service procured by St. Lucia will run the government's e-procurement application in the cloud thus bringing the added advantage of climate resilience, as the hardware and software used on this platform will be beyond the reach of natural disasters, such as hurricanes and floods. One of the key deliverables of that process required the automation of the procurement aspect, um, receiving tenders, coordinating with vendors and that sort of thing. Um, we went the route of acquiring a software as a service, which is relatively new in this part of the, this part of the world. Um, E-procurement is a big thing in all modern jurisdictions, um, but normally what you see happening is persons developing their own applications. Um, recently, as uh, last year, I think the government of Jamaica spent in like almost two million US in developing an e-procurement platform. We went a more fastly becoming popular route of doing a software as a service, whereas you simply subscribe to a service provider and you get all the functionality that you require. It is tailored to have a look and feel of your local environment. Government is the single largest buyer of goods, services and works, making public procurement instrumental in poverty alleviation, promotion of good governance, enabling regional economic integration and international trade, including the implementation of national economic, social, and environmental policies. However, before the electronic procurement system can be rolled out, the Director of Finance, Esther Rigobert, highlighted that it must be accompanied by reform of St. Lucia's procurement legislation and regulations. There's the legislative review and legislative framework that we are going to enhance. And once that law um, is enacted, it would allow and stipulate what would be good governance for public procurement. So it's no longer going to be something that happens within the confines of government. It will be for the public to see, to read, and to familiarize themselves with the requirements, the guidelines, and procedures that will be applied to public procurement. Um, the second aspect of the reform would actually be um, the system, the platform, through which persons would make submissions, whether it be bids or um, requests. And it will be a very, very transparent process and um, very efficient as well, so that our data, the data emanating from that system would allow for um, a, um, online, real-time analysis of the data. She added that the new legislation and procurement guidelines will soon be available to the public via the government web portal. But for the system to be fully effective, persons must educate themselves on the new guidelines. So it's not just first to have new systems and it cannot be used efficiently or effectively. Persons must avail themselves of the information 
familiarize themselves with the requirements, make the necessary inquiries, and make sure they understand how it's to be used and make good use of it. Testing of the localized e-procurement system is expected for August this year, with the pilot phase expected to go live by the end of September 2020. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to the development of the south of the island. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, speaking recently at the ribbon cutting ceremony for ITEL BPO, indicated that the government is seeking to make Vuefort the engine of significant growth for the country. However, this cannot be done without the requisite infrastructural investments. Some of the infrastructural projects include the road rehabilitation project, the completion of the St. Jude Hospital, and several housing developments. Um, as you know, we have just begun breaking ground on a 200 million US dollar airport redevelopment. So we're talking about building a brand new airport facility. And I'm also, you would, have, you would appreciate this, that we are in the process of negotiating with the US government on getting pre-clearance facilities here in St. Lucia for that facility. Um, we've also just recently opened up a brand new um, FBO uh, here for private planes. We have broken ground on a substantial water project, um, which is almost $60 million. To be able to expand the supply of water for the south, I think we're currently at one and a half million gallons a day. We're going to about four and a half million gallons of water a day. The Prime Minister indicated that residents of the South have had to travel to the north of the island seeking employment. This, he noted, has adversely impacted residents. However, by bringing investments to the South, this will aid in alleviating some of the challenges. So when I see some young people having to commute two hours every single day um, to go up north, uh, in order to be able to bring money back home to their family. So think of that, four hours every day that they could have had at home, either spending time with their family or, like many entrepreneurial young people, in farming and generating additional revenue um, for their families. The time away from home and not being able to do and contribute to the development of their family here in the South. And those are the ones who look to commute. The other ones who decide that they're going to live up north now have the additional cost of paying for rent, maintaining two households. And so therefore, their wealth that many St. Lucians were looking for was being deprived of them. And so a, a large part of what we're attempting to do here in the South is people. It's about improving the quality of life of St. Lucians. That was Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chasney. The Youth Empowerment Project is lending its support to the Community Services Unit in strengthening the community after-school program. The YEP, through appropriate integrated community-based transformation programs, specifically targets young men of vulnerable groups, especially youth, women, and children at risk. Chevroy Marius tells us more. The Youth Empowerment Project, through the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, is actively seeking to create solutions to address some of the social issues within communities in the Gasseries region. This project, through appropriate integrated community-based transformation programs, will especially target young men, vulnerable groups, especially youth, women and children at risk. Project coordinator of the Youth Empowerment Project, YEP, Joanne Husbands, stated that community-based transformation programs under the YEP will assist the Community Services Unit of the Ministry in strengthening the existing community after-school program and increase access for beneficiaries from Wilton's Yard, New Village, Conway, and Bernard Hill. Well, the Youth Empowerment Project is a project executed by the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment and one of its components is that of the Integrated Community-Based Transformation Programs. And this particular um, program, it has the Community After School Program where we are tasked to strengthen the existing Community After School Programs, especially those in the Castro Central Basin and of course increase the access to the project beneficiaries of Wilton's Yard, New Village, Conway and Barnard Hill 
so that they could be an active part in the community after-school program. She further noted beneficiaries of the community after-school program who are flagged will also receive assistance from literacy and numeracy professionals. Under the Youth Empowerment Project, we will have literacy and numeracy professionals or experts, guidance counselors who provide addiction services, life skills and trauma support, where flagged beneficiaries within the community after school programs will receive the supportive assistance. Director of the Community Services Unit in the Ministry of Equity, Jim Xavier, stated that although the community after school program has been operational for 10 years, YEP's input during this period in time is extremely important. At this point in time, it is extremely important to have YEP's input, financially in particular, because as you know, in light of COVID, government revenues have been severely depleted. And so it's like a lifeline that we are having through the input of YEP into the program this year. One of the major roles that YEP is going to play is in terms of the evaluation and monitoring of the program because YEP is specifically charged with the strengthening of the program. Because as you would know, the programs have been running for 10 years, and CDB's focus is to strengthen the program, particularly in the Castries area. CASP coordinator Antonia Rene Marius welcomed the initiative and stated that to achieve these outcomes, the collaborative efforts will use an integrated-based community approach to reach as many children as possible. Being able to tap into their resources is of great help. Normally, the community after school program cannot afford to do all of that on its own. So it's, almost, it's, it's a, a, a community approach now for us. That's what we're trying to do. So bring in as many partners as we can to reach as many children as we can. The Youth Empowerment Project, YEP, is financed through loans and grants facilitated by the Caribbean Development Bank and bonds facilitated by the government of St. Lucia. The collaboration is expected to commence in September 2020. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius. World Hepatitis Day is celebrated annually on the 28th of July to raise awareness of viral hepatitis, which causes inflammation of the liver and can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer. This year, the theme of this day is Hepatitis Free Future. The focus is on the prevention of mother-to-child transmission of Hepatitis B. The Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, urges countries to maintain essential prevention and treatment services for viral hepatitis during the COVID-19 pandemic so as not to jeopardize progress towards its elimination. PAHO's director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, explained that in the midst of a pandemic, viral hepatitis continues to sicken and kill thousands of people. Services including vaccination against hepatitis B are essential and cannot be stopped. Care must continue safely for all those who need it, she added. In the Americas, 3.9 million people live with chronic hepatitis B and 5.6 million live with hepatitis C. However, a model developed by the World Health Organization, WHO, estimates that 17 countries in the region have already managed to eliminate mother-to-child and early childhood transmission of hepatitis B and that the Americas as a whole has also achieved the goal of less than 0.1% prevalence of hepatitis B in children under the age of 5. PAHO and the WHO recommends that all newborns are vaccinated against hepatitis B at birth and subsequently receive at least two additional doses to be protected for life. Dr. Etienne indicated, quote, with universal vaccination, we are creating new generations free from hepatitis B and moving towards eliminating hepatitis as a public health problem, unquote. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. 
You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au temps, Janelle. Monsieur Bram, département, qui n'est pas responsable pour information en gouvernement sur le site GIS et télévision nationale via NTN, qu'a fait cette nouvelle Aquayol, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Plusieurs citoyens pays ont recevoir des bénéfices au du programme qui a supporté le plan de stabilisation sociale que le gouvernement a implémenté en bas de la situation de la maladie de Corona. Le programme, c'est pour principalement les gens qui ne peuvent pas payer en Haïti, mais qui ont perdu le travail à résultat de la maladie de Corona. Le gouvernement a approuvé 20 millions de dollars pour assister tous ces divers individus qui engagent un business qui sont eux-mêmes. C'est une journée et un moment qui porte à l'eau joyeuse avec la cotonnement, qui aussi est une cause l'âme de l'eau, ziel jauté, comme ces individus cela expliqué manière assistance finance cela qui marche en faveur avec la famille. Chaque individu trouvait 1600 dollars, il aussi montré un fonds chayo de gré après ce séjour pour service cela hors gouvernement cette fois-ci. Il a aussi avoué qui depuis un finissement au mois de février, il n'a jamais fait un centime. Alors, petit, quand il a assisté à un salarié, avec un petit, quand il a petit, c'est un soukou proche et qui a sauvé l'âme. Il a ajouté qu'il a remercié le gouvernement et qu'il a accueilli aussi tout le monde qui devait être à la qui a fait la même chose pour montrer la gratitude. Il dit que malgré ce n'est pas un grand homme l'argent, mais petit, quand il est, c'est un soulagement cher. En l'autre, il a dit qu'il a apprécié si tellement parce que ça, il était sa pays d'être qui était cadré pour un titre à présent. Et ça, c'est une grande bénédiction que le gouvernement a posé à ce jour. Il y a l'autre déclaré qui est très excité parce que le gouvernement tient pour mettre les qui étaient fait et principalement pour les plus grands citoyens et les mamans enfants aussi. Le gouvernement ni plan pour longer à ce programme ça là pour assister tout le monde qui trouvait affecté et dernier jour pour le monde fait application. C'est le 3 juillet 2020. Chef officier de ce télévisionnement, M. Parker Ragnanan, très concerné du monde qui a bâti l'établissement qui a menacé santé publique. M. Ragnanan a dit ça comme gouvernement a bâti le ministre de santé qui a vu l'examiner la loi qui a gouverné santé publique qui est en existence pour plus de 40 ans à présent. Selon Ragnanan, la situation côté le monde qui a bâti par cochon. Pac pour kabati pour um, foucher bon n'importe côté en public c'est une mauvaise menace pour cette public. Nous voyons mon café pac cochon n'importe côté avec tout caca cochon avec glo cochon gros plat cochon c'est un wavin n'ayez qu'à aller avec ces mêmes wavin ça nous a servi pour prendre l'eau pour nous boire. L'année là nous j'ai ouais côté pac pour par exemple j'ai affecté ma mère l'école côté l'école n'est pour fermer comme un jour. Et que c'est ma mère qui vient là, il passe après une bonne respiration, il va taper rash, tout en l'air là pour ça n'est pas bon. Donc, c'est dans ces problèmes-là. Je ne vais pas finir de tous ces problèmes-là, nous avons jeunes, c'est complet. Mais c'est à dans nous qui avons la voix à présent. Même le Parlement pour cela, le Canary, le ministre des Affaires et Communications et Travaux, en temps passé, qui est le QC, qui a trouvé un grand lettement officiel, mardi le 27 juillet, en grand cathédrale catholique à Castri. Défin Foster, qui était un avocat par profession, très passé à mois de juin après un de l'année à coucher malade. Monsieur Foster, c'était un avocat extraordinaire qui était très formidable à façon qui était à faire défense de représentation en ces divers cas à Kylo Dias, ni en cette ci et aussi en plusieurs pays à Caribla. Il y a un peu changé le cas concernant Malik en Trinidad, qui était en bas à Ouet et qui était en plein de fête contre lui 
pour yon l'amour qui se force à te faire grand représentation et formidable tout le monde. Il y a aussi trouvé publicité internationale, en parmi plusieurs autres cas qui étaient représentés. Il y a aussi, c'était un politicien qui conduit politiquement et puis en plus la chargesse était très vicieuse aussi. Alors, Grec en profession légale, là, parmi eux, les gros juges, tu considéré qu'il y a un premier avocat pour siècle. Ça, là. En parmi les amis qui parlaient de c'était un grand juge en temps passé, honorable Sir Dennis Byron, qui parlait de relations avec M. Foster, avec des gros traitements, et trouvé un avocat à l'aise, commencé à travailler à cette place. Claudius Francis et Rick Wynn aussi parlaient de relations, et puis M. Foster, concernant les bénéfices de relations, ça, là, pour trouver la chargesse avocat, ça, là qui partait deuxième pour pièce l'autre. Comparé à les mariners, vous racontez des grandes relations, il y a des salas pour 57 années, pour juste le moment où il est passé. C'est Ishley, Peter, Colin, Tiana, et l'autre aussi parlé, concernant des grandes relations, papa, et puis tout Ishley, et en façon il était aidé un peu le monde qui était paré devant lui, en Kailogis, et pas été capable de payer pour représentation et avocat. La vie de faire Kenneth Foster qui aussi en politique et loi, c'est une qui l'autre qui suit pour un peu de temps pour venir. C'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle nouvelle. Monsieur, madame, je vous remercie autant. Pour regarder, je vous remercie une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous pouvez vous présenter une nouvelle à quoi vous avez présenté. Vous pouvez vous présenter au channel. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Channel Novel.